want to say a big hello to you this morning. Letting you know a couple of things before we go into the ministry of the Lord's table. We have the Lord's table uh, today. We want to preach and teach you some things about the Lord's table. And uh, while we do that, I want you to know that on the 22nd of October, we have a very special program. Please make it a point to bring all your friends and relatives. Dr. M. A. Vergis will be with us. And uh, we will have a meeting, a big meeting in the big sanctuary hall upstairs. Please make it a point to call all your friends and relatives and uh, um, make sure this is not. Yeah. And uh, please bring your relatives and friends, those who want to be saved. This man, Dr. Vergis, is a, was a scientist. And God has blessed him and his children too. Uh, amazingly, they have amazing ministry. I think they got the largest collection of people in Bangalore. And uh, he's in the United States for a small trip. We decided to invite him. And uh, he has agreed to be with us. I met him last week. He's very anointed. He has become more anointed. But he looks a little physically weak after all the operation that he went through. I want you to pray today for him. Please make it a point to bring all your friends and relatives. Take some flyers and put it in your schools and all these places. Make sure and pray. Make sure that people come. Also next week, Wednesday, uh, I would like all of you who are involved with that meeting. I would like you to come here in the evening. We'll have a special prayer and discussion about that. Amen. So keep it in mind, it's the 22nd of October. We have uh, Dr. Vergis with us. An evening with Jesus, we are trying to advertise it in all the TVs, Power Vision, and all these places. We expect a group of lot, lot of people to come. I hope this is clear. Any questions about it, please speak to Brother Vinu Vergis, and uh, he will tell you more about it. Also, it's time to say goodbye to one of our sons who is going to leave us for some time. Uh, Bonnie Thomas, will you come forward? When someone leaves the house, it's a pain. If we don't feel good. Children never understand the pain of parents. Did I baptize you? <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> I remember that day many years ago when God did an amazing thing. Pastor George, how many in your house, how many baptisms we had? At one stretch, 11 baptisms. Yeah. Bonnie was one of that. And, uh, you know, I've seen how God led him when he went to Florida the first time. He had a wonderful group of people to strengthen him and help him. And uh, then he came back to Philadelphia and uh, he lost his friends. And uh, he went through a struggle. One of the things I like about Bonnie is very innocent, very straightforward. Bonnie is like a person that says in the Bible, like Nathaniel uh, or Nathaniel. There is no guile in him. <laughs> I've often thought, when is this guy going to learn some guile? <laughs> guile means, you know, this crookedness and clever-mindedness. And I have not seen him in this, and I'm so happy about him. Now he's going to uh, Indiana. Funny. Okay. He's going to Indiana. He's, he's uh, accepted an offer there. I don't like him to go. <laughs> but he has to go, right? So don't have to leave at some time. Because that is God's plan for them. Um, he actually was planning to go sometime in February. But the Lord made it a point that he would get there three, four months early. God is a plan. Well, as a pastor, I naturally wanted to reach out to some people in Indiana. We have some friends there. But I decided, no. <laughs> I knew it. I don't want to tell people, uh, you know, our church is there, go there. No. <laughs> He's... Uh, he's a grown-up man. May the Lord guide him. I want you to pray that he'll get to be the part of the right church. Okay? We don't teach our children to be part of any name. There is only one name we want our children to be. That is Jesus. But Bonnie, as your father in the Lord, 
any church that you go to make it a point that they do not deny the holy spirit and the power okay never get into denominations whether they are american or indian or anything don't get into denominations where they deny the holy spirit uh, make sure you go there and ask the lord any church you go to lord are you here please prove it to me beyond a doubt okay god will give you a good church okay we are praying that's my primary concern wherever he goes that he will be part of a spirit and our inner church is my concern isn't that your concern too hallelujah and uh, he's living now so we're going to bless him right now so before that uh, will, if you would like to say a few words about me would you like to say okay i want i want later <laughs> no ah <laughs> uh, yeah i know you've heard some rumors i'm leaving i'm going to do this like george uncle announced dennis's wedding I know you heard some rumors. I'm here to <laughs> I'm here to confirm that those rumors are true. I'm leaving. Um I really still it's all just hitting me now. It's all really happened really fast. Um but you know the one thing I I was like I was wondering what to say and you know the only thing I can really say is man, you know when God opens the door, man, there's just everything just it just comes like everything just moves. You know, I didn't have to think about, oh, how do I how do I make this work or how do I do this? Everything just aligned, you know, like it's crazy. When God tells you or when God opens a door for you, man, like it's not just the door that opens, like like everything is there for you, you know. God provides a way. And it's awesome, man. I'm blown away just by just by I I I'm, I'm even amazed I got this job. I'm like, how? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I saw the people I interviewed with. We interviewed as a group, you know. So I saw all the other candidates um and there was others you know the day after and all that you know i'm like man these guys have experience these have all of this you know they have you know like they've been in the industry before like and then you know the one thing that god saw me through all this you know god doesn't call the qualified you know he he qualifies the called you know and it's so crazy and this is man god is just blowing my mind you know and yeah please keep me in your prayer and you know after i get a house you know come by <laughs> bring food uh bonnie um <clears throat> let me know <laughs> before you get friendly with anyone <laughs> amen thank you that's between us you don't have to listen <laughs> come on church lift your hands and bless him he's a great guy god has great plans for our son i will miss him i want to remember all the times he has been available to take me around i'm going to really miss him in a particular way but it is to the lord who love him more that i'm handing him over i know his dad's and mom's heart his sister his younger brother they're all going to miss him but we are releasing him into the hands of god because we love him because we know god loves him father we thank you for this precious son of ours you chose him even from the foundations of the world and lord you confirm that call as he said lord you qualifies you qualify the caller then the call strengthen him lord jesus make him a man after your own heart that all the things good things that he has put in his life blossom for you lord we pray for security in that place we pray for victory favor and the fragrance of your anointing upon our son thank you lord we release him into your hands anoint him fresh thank you lord thank you thank you thank you thank you in jesus name we pray Thank you, sir. Keep him in prayer. Will you, church? Hallelujah. The Lord told me one thing: wherever he goes, he'll be most favored, wanted. Amen. Some of you seem to be jealous. Bad thing to be. Lord's table in front of us, and uh, I want to go through some part of Scripture uh, just to tell you what the Lord's table is all about. In our church, we are very open. We are very free about the Lord's table. but it is my job i believe in the lord to tell you some of the things about the lord's table we go to exodus chapter 12 today old testament mosaic times <clears throat> not exactly our cup of tea but still those are the scriptures given by god and we need to gather instructions from there so i'll be reading a part of this first and uh, uh, all of you little children who can you know keep him quiet And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying This month shall be unto you the beginning of months 
it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Verse 7, And they shall take off the blood, strike it on the two side posts, and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. See it? And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast it with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Verse 10, And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remains of it until the morning, you shall burn with fire. Verse 11, And you shall eat it, with your loins girded, yes, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Enough. This is the first time the children of Israel were instructed about the Passover. About nine temptations, you can say, had come to the children of Israel, and God had shown again and again to Pharaoh that God is God. Now the last thing was coming up. In spite of nine signs from God that he is God, Pharaoh refused to yield. Pharaoh said, I still am God. That's how some people are. In spite of all the problems they go through, they still think they are gods. And finally, God had to bring one more. He was preparing his people before the last plague was about to hit the nation of Egypt. Before the plague came, God told Moses, Moses, get ready. It's time. Tell your neighbor, it's time. It's time. Moses, you need to do these things. Number one, get a lamp. Should be perfect. Two, he said, if anybody does not have the ability to buy a goat or a lamb for himself, you should be able to buy one in your house so that you can provide for him also. In other words, that was about brotherhood. That is what the church stands for. Remember, you are one nation under the commandment of God. I am going to take you to the promised land before you are going to be delivered from the authority of Pharaoh. You have to develop the idea that you are brothers and sisters. Therefore, when you take a lamp, make it a point that you are taking or preparing a lamp also for your brother who doesn't have one. Amen. Three, you can need not come together in one house. According to the houses, we saw it in plural. Number four, when you eat it, you have to put on your shoes. You have to gird your loins with a belt. You have to have a staff in your hand. And you should eat it with haste. Don't spend a lot of time in front of that and worry about the food material. What are you eating? What you are not eating? Just eat it. Hello. Moses did exactly that. Ever since, the children of Israel were celebrating the festival of Passover. Now when you go to Luke chapter 22, you see our Lord Jesus Christ is about to celebrate Passover. Number one, he celebrates the Passover not with his family, not with his mother, not with his brothers and sisters in the flesh, if I may say that. But he celebrates the Passover with his disciples. Jesus celebrates the Passover with those whom God gave it to him. He tells his disciples, guys, go and prepare a room. 
and we shall have Passover there. Amen. So Jesus has the Passover. He celebrates the Passover. And in that time of celebrating the Passover, Jesus inaugurates the new covenant. I want you to think. Number one, what were the kind of food material God had asked Moses to celebrate the Passover with? There was a bitter plant which they had to eat. There were so many things God had said that they should do. But when you come to the way Jesus had celebrated the Passover, you do not see Jesus doing all these things. The Bible does not say that the, that the disciples had a staff in their hand. The Bible does not say they all had shoes around them. The Bible does not say any of those things in the new covenant. What does it say? It only says that the Passover was prepared. Why? Because the one who had in the first place instructed Moses to do these things was right now there in the flesh. Church, I want you to know, Jesus Christ is greater than the doctrine. Did you follow that? Many people are desperate for the doctrine. Jesus is greater than doctrine. Do we have doctrines? Yes, we have doctrines. But obedience to doctrine is not as important as loving the Lord. I know a lot of people who say, I am, you know, I am, I am very uh, full of doctrines and I know all the doctrines under the sun. And Hold on. Loving Jesus Christ is greater than holding on to doctrines. For example, church, let me ask you, why did you take baptism? Why were you baptized? 90% people will say, I wanted to go to heaven. <laughs> baptism is not for you to go to heaven. Baptism is an act of love. I got married to my wife, not for the marriage ceremony, but to love her and cherish her all the days of my life. Somebody said, Hallelujah. For a woman, for a girl, the marriage ceremony is one of the most important things in her life. She decides the clothes she wears. She gets a lot of attention. You know, that is the day probably the videographer will come and say, turn like this and turn like that and all these things. She gets a lot of importance. Every person gets a lot of importance during their wedding day. Can you imagine somebody saying, you know, I'm getting married so that I'll get a lot of attention? No, marriage is forever. In the same way, Baptism is not something with a, with a selfish attitude. You know, Pastor, I want to go to heaven. I don't care how you do it. Just dip me, dip me, dip me. No, if you love me, obey my commandments. If you're baptized, it is because you love Jesus. Not to go to heaven. That is what we preach in this church. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, you will. And I tell you, it is not only ba baptism that you will obey. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, love your, love your brothers as, amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus was not really concerned about the, 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 you know, the, the number of bread, the bread pieces, and the wine, and the quality of the wine, and these are all brought in by legalistic Pharisees with Pharisaical mind. Church, come out of it. They were having food. Who prepared it? The disciples prepared it. They brought the bread. He took the bread. He broke it and said, guys, this bread symbolizes the bread that came from heaven, which is me. I said, nobody else can say that but he. He alone can say that I am the bread that came from heaven. Your fathers were given manna from heaven. I am the bread. He said, I'm breaking it now. I'm breaking that bread. And I'm giving each one of you a little piece. Take, eat of this. This is a new covenant. Me in you. A part of me in you. That's a new covenant. Then he took the cup. And he said, guys, a new testament is being inaugurated in my blood. Not the blood of ox and bullock, 
God was never pleased with the sacrifice of ox and bullocks. Because Moses and company could not really understand the heart of God in its fullness. God said, all right, all right, let me make you understand something. This is the way things are. But when the sun came, he said, guys, you do not have to worry anymore about breaking the, you know, breaking the head of bulls and ox. I am ready to be given up as an offering. Don't worry about these things. When you come to Acts chapter 2, you see the language of the heart mentioned in Acts 2. The early church, how did they break bread? Come to the last uh, 41, 42, 43. How did they break bread? Of course, they that gladly received his word were baptized. And then verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. The doctrine is not, not mentioned there. It doesn't matter because that doctrine was given to them that point of time. Church, I want you to know, every time God begins to bring more and more doctrines according to the need of the church, you and I are only called to obey. Let me ask you this. You had a set of rules when you were in grade 4, right? But those set of rules changed when you were in grade 8. And those set of rules changed when you were going to college. And those set of rules changed when you went to your workplace. Bonnie's going to a new place. He's going to have to submit to a lot of new people, new fresh ideas, fresh thoughts. If Bonnie starts going against them, you know, I'm coming from Philadelphia, man. What, what do you think? You, know, I, you don't know anything. If that is Bonnie's attitude, he's in trouble. There also he's asked to be submissive to his boss so that he may go up. Those who humble themselves, God will lift up. It is not a doctrine. It is a fact that you are willing to be obedient and submissive to the apostles, to God himself. Do I hear an amen, people of God? A simple, simple experience I had. I don't want this church to be like that. I pray. I have had a lot of people coming and telling me what the doctrine is. This is we don't agree with this. That's fine. I have seen their life. I have been surprised. People are talk a lot about doctrine. They don't have the life of Christ. They are more interested in their doctrine than in Christ. Church, may it be that you are full of Christ and may the Lord completely fill you with the needed doctrine whenever it is required. Somebody said hallelujah. Love matters more than doctrine. Hallelujah. So they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Compare this with the day of, Pente of, 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 of the Passover. God gave his uh, plan to Moses. Not to everybody. God gave his idea to Moses and said, Moses, tell the people to take a lamp. Same thing when you come to the church. Listen to what the apostles have to say. By the way, these days when we are, we have a small issue in raising churches because there are so many doctrines available, so many teachings available in the YouTube today. I want you to know God's plan has not changed. What you need to go forward with what you need to hear and understand is given in your local church. Those who heard it said an amen. Just for your information, you also have seen us in your church welcoming a lot of people, pastors, leaders. We love them. We respect them. Please remember, when it comes to the doctrine of the church, it is not their business. It is my business. Somebody said hallelujah. They can come and teach here. They can come and evangelize there. They can equip you. They can bless you. But when it comes to the church, it is none of their business. It is our business. It is my business. Somebody who heard it said a hallelujah. Amen? We are not a branch of any church. In case somebody told that, no, we are not. We are connected to Almighty God. And the Lord has said he will raise up other churches through us. At the same time, we honor servants of God. We love them. We do our best to make sure that not a single person who comes here is anytime dishonored. But I have had experiences when a couple of people, immature as they are, they try to take over the people, take over the houses, try to, you know, subvert households against the man of God. No. You and I, we have a covenantial relationship. This church is so open in the Lord. You can listen to any word of God. Be blessed. We don't stop anybody from doing any of these things. But at the end of the day, make sure you are submissive to Almighty God and you are faithful to the local church. Is this clear? Oh, by the way, I want some of you to know some pastors can be so mean and rude, they're so possessive. 
Did you go to that church? Did you listen to this YouTube? Did you listen to that? We don't do these things because we don't believe in all this nonsense. We trust in the Lord for you. Remember, do not let other doctrinarians come and indoctrinate you. For example, for example, she'll be quiet. For example, some time ago, somebody said, came here and started raising uh, funds, tried to raise funds for the church, not for himself. But immediately I felt in the spirit it was the, not the right spirit. He's a good man. He was very anointed. His ministry also was impeccable. But he had no right. He did not know. He had no right to talk about the finance of the church. Immediately I sensed it. I just told some people, relax, take it easy. Because people can sometimes be immature. They can go beyond a point. For example, I have freedom in your church, in your houses. But isn't there a limit? I have freedoms in your houses. I can come there anytime. I can give you a call. But there is always a limit which I keep for myself and you expect me to keep. Same thing goes for visiting pastors. Same thing happens in your heart. Your primary responsibility is to live in total obedience to the man of God, to the anointing that is in the church. Those in agreement said an amen. Hallelujah. So they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. That is the next thing that you see even there in the Passover. Where's your, where's your diary? You stop. What is fellowship? What is fellowship? Let me explain to you in a new way. If I were to tell you that God stands with every person who is born again and baptized, some of you will immediately tell me, then why are they behaving like that? Pastor, if God is, you know, if, God, if you say that God is standing with every so-called Pentecostal believer and they begin to behave like demons, how can you have fellowship with them? Answer, if your children were behaving like that, would you throw them out? If your dad or mom or your sister or brother, your own family member, if they hurt you a lot, will you throw them out? You answer me. The relationship we have with a child of God who is baptized, who is filled with the Holy Spirit is greater than the relationship we have with people in the flesh. I want the church to be full of this wisdom. If you ask me today, I will stand with all people, however bad they may be. I will stand with those who are with the Lord because they are my brothers. Let this, let this wisdom come to you. Let this glory, let this understanding come to you. If I were to stand with the man of God who may have erred in front of every other person, I will still stand with the man of God because he is anointed and he is my brother. That's the relationship you are talking here. Quick question. Listen to me. If my daughters who are standing here make a mistake, how will I punish them? How will I deal with them? I will try to hide them. I will try to take care of them. I will I'll try to do the best so that nobody may know the mistakes they have made because I am their dad. If, something, if they are made fun of, I and my wife will also be made fun of. Amen? But supposing, let us say, it is, uh, okay, she's very cl close to me, but still I'm saying you. Supposing Betsy made a, made a big mistake in church. Dad, Betsy, I've been wanting to correct you. Wrong fellowship. She is equally my daughter as far as my da other daughters are also. Do you get the picture, people of God? We all are brothers and sisters in the Lord, and we have a right to cover one another, even though it hurts. Have you ever been hurt by fellow believers? Probably not in Philadelphia Revival Church, but somewhere else. Anybody who has been hurt by fellow believers, can I see your hands? Just one or two, Bibin and Sheena and my mother. Thank you. That's the only people. Others have not been hurt. You got plastic uh, skins or something. Great people. What happens when you are hurt? Those are opportunities for us to love our brother and sister a little more. That's fellowship. Sometimes we come to the end of our strength to love somebody because people do things totally nonsensically, if I may use that word. Still, God says, hold on, that's your brother, that's your sister. I love the story about uh, two young people. I want two volunteers. Come, Shane and... Okay, 
let's say he's the elder brother and he's a younger brother. Okay. One day there were two people and the elder brother was carrying just about, don't, don't carry okay? The elder brother was carrying the younger brother. Okay? And as he was walking, somebody asked, excuse me, is this a burden for you? He said, it is not a burden. You get the picture? The burden disappears and it becomes your brother. If your brother or sister is not up to the mark, good. God gives you amazing grace. You stop calling your brother or sister a burden and start calling them a blessing. That's not a burden. That's my brother. That's not a burden. That's my sister. Hallelujah. That is fellowship. That is what it means. That is what church is for. Church is not primarily to become the largest church, the greatest church. Our church pastor is a superstar. He's the latest mega pastor. As we said, he's the head guy. He's a fantastic guy. God isn't concerned about all these superlatives. God is more concerned if we are ready to wipe somebody's tears in the church. God is more concerned if we can pray and know if our brothers or sisters are really going through struggle and without knowing if some of us are to go to somebody's house, sit with them and pacify them and speak a good word to them. God is more honor, honored in that. Oh, hallelujah. That's what the church stands for. Young people, the future of this church, God will give it to you people. Never, 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 never build on the wrong principles. We will have a big group of people and God will bless us. So many thousands of people will come. We have a prophecy. But our focus is not on that. Our focus is on the heart of God, which is always there to comfort somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And then the breaking of bread. Breaking the bread from a heart of fellowship and from a heart of obedience. That is the breaking of bread God is happy about. This morning, before we go into the table, we are going to do a different kind of a ministry. Amen? We're going to pray for many of you. Many of you need to be prayed over. Some of you are sick, some of you are weak. God wants to minister to you today. Amen? This is not a table of, uh, what shall I say, of PRC doctrine. This is a table of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which you become part of, you go back in victory, in healing, in deliverance, in love. Hallelujah. I want to touch one area where a lot of people need healing. If I were to live with somebody, let's say if I am living with my wife, she hurts me, I hurt her, we forgive one another, it's over. As long as we don't see each other. But husbands and wives who live together, who are together, they keep on hurting, hurting, hurting. A time, a place comes where nobody is bothered. It becomes part of life. But I have news for you. The hurt can be taken away. God can give you grace that you may never fall in that area. Families, when you are together and pray, mighty things happen in your family. You don't need the Reverend Dr. Nainanti Karibil to put his hand on you. <laughs> You're ready. Families, hallelujah. God wants to heal you today. How long, Lord, will I put up with this? Today, today is the last day. If you allow a healing to come into your heart, God wants to pour out. Young people, some of those temptations are not going away because you need a healing in that area. Temptations and temptations come on after the other. Sometimes you fall into temptations and then you feel bad. You don't want to come into the presence of God because somebody told you God is a consuming fire. He will give you one chance, two chance, three chance. But if you keep falling the fourth time, that's it. Wrong message. God knows why you keep falling in certain areas. He's a good God. And He wants to lift you up. Make you champions. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we come to the Lord's table today. Hallelujah. Those who need a prayer this morning. Those who say, I need this cleansing touch. Those who say, I need this healing touch. I need to be an overcomer. Such people, I want you to stand up in your place. We're going to minister to you. Thank you, Jesus. And then we will break bread. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, precious silver. Purify my heart. Pure gold. Refine us, fire. Refine us, fire. My heart's one desire. to have the Passover later years they used to purify themselves but today we have Jesus our purifier in us he is our righteousness he is our sanctification he is our redemption and in him it is my job to strengthen you in Christ purify come on children let me be a 